That's my uh, copyright free Beetlejuice music, so I hope it was horribly enjoyable for you. <laughs> Hello friends, welcome back to Moon Magic Spirit, and if you're new, welcome, my name is Meg, and today we are doing some Halloween DIY projects. And I say Halloween in general because these are like year-round decor kind of things for me. Um, I'm a spooky witch, I'm a spooky bitch, and if you're here, I'm assuming you are too. Chantel Phillips on TikTok did this with the Target dollar spot items. And I saw it and loved it and needed to do it for myself. So if you're a Beetlejuice fan, you're going to like this. Or you can make it your own and not have it be Beetlejuice themed. So the only thing that I couldn't find at Dollar Spot was the black and white pumpkin that she had in the DIY. Which is fine because at Joanne Fabrics, I was able to get this wooden pumpkin. It was on sale for $8.00. I'm just gonna paint it myself and I like doing DIYs and painting so this is a cute little pumpkin search around for it if you can't find it the dollar target spots are like <laughs> completely ripped through but luckily I was able to find everything else and it all starts with this tray this was uh, five dollars at the dollar spot I do my last video was a haul so if you're coming from that you're like okay I already know but I also show you a bunch of other Halloween decor items that I've recently picked up so if you're interested in that it's linked up here and also down below but this little tray is so cute and basically what Chantel did in her video is that she put stripes on these to make them like the sand snakes from Beetlejuice so I love that idea to have the striped little pumpkin here and then also from the dollar spot there were these black roses we're gonna pick these off and hot glue them and then there's also these like burgundy like crimson color flowers so the idea is to like put the flowers you know around in front of a pumpkin it's hard to do and then the last step to it are these LED candles that were also at the dollar spot these were three or five dollars they take double a batteries so it's just this cute little tray with the pumpkin and the flowers and I think I'm gonna end up painting these like a dark charcoal color just to fit more in with the theme and I just like a darker candle so that is the DIY projects that we're going to be working on today. Let's get into it. Anne enters voiceover Meg. So I'm using what I have around my house. And what I happen to have is a paint sample <laughs> from House Paint. So this is in the shade Cracked Pepper. It's like this beautiful like charcoal, dark gray, not quite black, still in the gray family. And I'm using the smaller paintbrush and I'm just going to paint these LED candles. Like I said, I didn't want them white, but I didn't want to paint them black in the black acrylic paint that I have because I wanted some contrast from the tray. And I was kind of like, ooh, I don't know. Is this going to like stick on plastic? You can see it's kind of looking a little, a little bit questionable here. <laughs> but it ended up working out just fine and looking so good. Um, I quickly got up to get some gloves because I did not want to get paint all over my hands. I did take painter's tape and wrap around the LED bulbs to keep them paint free free. Um, so this is like the messiest part of the DIY, honestly, probably because I use house paint. Um, but yeah, I just did two coats of paint on each candle and I let it dry and it came out to like this really cool texture. It's like a soft matte texture and I really liked using the bristles. I liked the texture that the bristles gave onto the candles. You can see I have a little foam stick in the background because if I didn't like the look of the brush strokes, I was going to use the foam to apply the paint, but I really like how the brush strokes ended up looking. 
Throughout this DIY, I was switching back and forth constantly, but for the sake of the video, I'm gonna show each thing in its own section. So up next is the pumpkin, and I wanted to do a touch of glam, so I thought it would be fun to do a metallic gold on this stem. So this is a Martha Stewart multi-surface metallic acrylic paint in the shade Brushed Bronze. As you can see from my paint palette, um, I'm no stranger to painting. I love painting, so I had this in my arsenal and it wasn't dried out and it turned out perfect. I love this. I did have to layer this, this because it was metallic. It was a little bit on the sheer side, so I did close to three coats of this acrylic paint on the stem. I really love doing different crafts, especially if painting is involved. It just gets me in my zone. It gets me focused. Like I'm not worrying or stressing out or having anxiety. It gives me my uh, creative rest. It gives me my sensory rest and my mental rest as well. Uh, I'm going to be putting out a video really soon talking about the seven different types of rest. So I thought it'd be fun to mention, but I really do just love getting lost and creating something and using the creative side of my brain. You may be wondering why I'm painting the pumpkin if it looks white, but if you are curious, this is the Americana acrylic paint in the shade warm white. Um, it looks pretty white here on camera, but you'll see when I go to do the black how taupe and brown this pumpkin actually is. So it actually worked out perfectly. Like I was so nervous that there wasn't going to be an like a odd amount of sides. <laughs> I was like, what if I have to have two white next to each other? And here I am triple checking to make sure that every single thing would, um, what was it? Alternate black and white. So I just used a little bit of a larger brush here. I was careful around the stem and I just figured white would be the easiest because you can kind of be a little bit sloppy with it and get away with it. Where black, it's a lot harder to cover up your mistakes. So I just covered the base of this and with this white paint, I did need to do two layers of this acrylic paint, but luckily it dried pretty fast between sessions. Like I said, you can't really notice a huge difference right now with this white paint going on top of it, but it will have a huge impact in just a second when we move on to painting the black part. I also just want to say in the TikTok that I saw, the girl was able to find a black and white striped pumpkin at the taller at the Target dollar spot for five dollars. Like it was already like Beetlejuice black and white striped. I couldn't find it. So that's how I ended up at Joanne Fabrics looking for a pumpkin and paying a couple dollars more. But I really enjoyed this process of painting, so I didn't mind it. But if you're wanting to do this yourself, you can check to see if you can find that striped pumpkin at your target. Now that the two layers of the white is fully dry, like wow, you can see how taupe and brown that pumpkin actually was. So I was just super glad that I ended up taking the time to paint the white stripes because it really, really made a difference. So here I am, I'm going in with the shade Lamp Black, and it's again, the Americana brand acrylic paint. Um, you can find these at Joanne Fabrics. They're super inexpensive. They're about a dollar something, but with the sale that they always have and with the coupon, it's like 80 cents for a couple ounce bottle. So this did the trick. And like I said, I like painting anyways. And a lot of my white and black paint had dried up. So I was needing some fresh bottles anyway. And this was the only black shade that they had. And luckily it is pretty black enough. I only ended up needing to do one coat with this. I didn't need to do a second coat. If I really wanted to, I probably could have, but I thought it looked fine with just one. 
Here is the pumpkin all done. It looks so freaking cute. I am so glad I ended up going with the gold brass for the stem. You also could have just gone for a brown stem or a black stem to keep with Beetlejuice or maybe done some green, but I really like how the pumpkin turned out. I think it looks super freaking cute. So now we are moving on to the most difficult and tedious part of this DIY. I'm not really sure what a better solution for this is. I'm just sharing what I did. So here I am with painter's tape. Um, and what I ended up doing, because the painter's tape was so wide, I cut the strip in half lengthwise and then I measured out about how long I needed the pieces to be to wrap around the snake so we can begin our sandworm transformation. So it was annoying wrapping the paint around. This is where my Aries and Patience comes in. Um, but yeah, this, this was the most time consuming, tedious part of the DIY especially getting the little loopy part of the tail, just trying to get the tape in there. Of course, if you're somebody that's like super careful, is it necessary to do this painter's tape? No, but I am a chaotic Aries that gets messy. So I, I just knew I needed to do the painter's tape to keep my lines and it would just make it less frustrating for me to like you know, it just would have been easier for me to have the painter tape in the lines even though it was a tedious process. So if you think that you can do this without needing to tape around the edges, I applaud you and wish you luck. But for me, this was just the better option. I am going back in with the same warm white that we used on the pumpkin and I'm being very careful um, again as a chaotic Aries uh, it's very hard for me to like not get the white paint on the different parts of the tray um, so if you catch it you can easily wipe it off and at the end of the day it is acrylic paint so you can kind of pick it off with your nail when it's dry um, but Again, I'm being careful around the head especially because it didn't lay flat and I wanted to have crisp lines. I struggle with perfectionism. So this was like a very good challenge and test for me to embrace the imperfection. That has been my mantra during this Virgo season. And it's perfect the way it is because I created it. So if it's not a perfectly straight line, that's totally okay and totally fine. And I hope that this message resonates to any other perfectionists that are out there watching this. Um, but my suggestion looking back on this is that they say with painter's tape, you need to peel it when the paint is wet or else the paint can come off with it if you wait until it's dry. So my mistake here was that I did two layers and I did two layers because it didn't look like it was really wanting to stick with just the one layer. Although I'm sure if I just would have had patience and let it dry, it would have been fine. So looking back in retrospect, I would do one layer, peel the paint off or peel the tape off and then do any touch ups where it looks like it needed a little thicker of a coat. And I did end up doing two layers of paint, which I think was almost too thick of paint for this plastic it just it didn't stick very well um so you'll see as I peel the paint off after I do the second layer it didn't exactly go as planned so looking back those are the kind of things that I would change hi hi I look like I'm uh lighted weird because I have like my light behind me Cause I'm, I'm painting <laughs> DIY. So like, I'm like, I have my camera going. So like my lighting is a little bit weird right now. I love it. I love the silhouette. Oh, thanks. Also lighting an aromatherapy candle, like eucalyptus rain and FaceTiming with one of your friends, 10 out of 10 totally adds to the experience. 
would definitely recommend during any DIY project to make it more fun and less frustrating. So while I was FaceTiming with my friend, I just kind of turned my camera off to save battery and I thought I turned it back on when I was peeling the paint off, but I was immersed in conversation. So I forgot to show it, but like there were so many little bits that like peeled off with it. So I kind of had to go back in to touch up a lot of spots anyways. So that's why I gave the advice with the painter's tape that I did of just doing the one layer and like removing the tape like while it's still damp and hopefully you have better results. And I also thought I recorded, but I didn't and I'm so upset and sad with myself that I didn't record it, but I did add details to the sandworm because I went and looked at my painting kit and I had this really nice like sea breeze blue color that I used for the lips and I also had a yellow and red that I used for the eyes, but you will see the close up and the details of that in just a second. Here you can see that I added the details of the sandworm. It's not a sandworm without its like blue teal lips, yellow eyes, and red pupils. I have a bunch of paint on hand um, just because I love painting, but you definitely don't need to spend the money for these three colors just for that small detail. But it's not super perfect, but at a distance. It looks fine, but yeah, I would recommend just trying to do one coat of the acrylic paint, or if you are doing two coats, to do two really thin coats. And it was a little hard to like not get it in certain spots, but overall, I am happy with how the tray turned out. So we have the tray done. This is an update on the candles. Um, it is weird that I used uh, house paint on the candles, but I wanted them to be a charcoal color, like a charcoal gray, like not completely black. So there is some contrast with the dark tray, so it just wasn't black for everything. Um, and it turned out fine. Like I like if you really scratch at it, I'm sure parts of it will nick off, but. I think it looks super cool. I really like it a lot. I like how this dark cracked pepper color turned out. It dried really nicely and I do like the texture of the paint with the brush. You can see the lines. So it was important to me to like have like the nice lines there. It's just a small detail, but yes, all that's left is to finish up this pumpkin in here. In the daytime, you can really see the difference in how taupey this wooden pumpkin was. Um, so again, I feel like that would have clashed a lot with the snakes and I did want the white to match the snakes. So I'm glad that I painted the white stripes. So and of course, the last step is arranging it all. If you wanted to, you could hot glue the floral arrangements in place, but I like the idea of having the freedom of just kind of arranging them how I want, or if I want to use the tray for something else in the future. So I just kind of stuck them in there and they stayed just fine. I love how cute this is. It's like the perfect centerpiece for my kitchen island. I don't have a dining room area, but it would look super cute there or maybe on a fireplace mantle. I hope you enjoyed this DIY. Don't forget to subscribe for more if you aren't yet already. And thank you for your time and energy.